The next thing we're going to talk about is the handshaking lemma. This is a classic lemma for graph theory. I just have the proof here. The first proof up top is not necessarily enlightening, so we're not really going to read through the details of the proof, but I'll read the idea of the theorem. It says that the sum of the degrees of the vertices of a graph must be even. Why on earth is that true? We'll do this with a really small example. So it's a one, two, three, four, and connect up some of those vertices and write down the degree of each vertex. Top left has two, top right has three, bottom right has two, bottom left has three. And if we add up the degrees, we get two plus three plus two plus three, we get 10, which is even. Cool. And even more enlightening, if we count the number of edges, there's one, two, three, four, five edges, which is two times five. It turns out that's always the case. Why on earth would that always be the case? The bottom proof says this it's sort of quick notation, which it says that every single edge gets counted twice. Of course it does. This top edge here connects two vertices. It gets counted twice. So every single edge will get counted twice when you're adding up every single degree. So if you add up the degree of every vertex, each edge gets counted twice. So the total degrees in the graph is 2m. Done. Why is this useful? If you remember the adjacency list format that we had, in this format, the length of each of those lists turns out to be the degree of the vertex. So the total amount of storage required for an adjacency list representation turns out to be 2m. So you need 2m amount of storage. And, 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 we know something. We know m, the number of edges, is less than or equal to n times n minus 1 over 2. Because we just proved that the number of edges in a complete graph is n times n minus 1 over 2. And that was an upper bound on the number of edges. So we can write this as n squared minus n if we do some distributing and cancellation. Notice n squared, the number of vertices squared, is bigger than this. So no matter what, bar none, the adjacency list representation always stores less data, which is one of the biggest reasons we commonly use it. In practice, most graphs aren't complete graphs, so this is a very, very aggressive upper bound. But even in the worst case, it still is better than the adjacency matrix for a total amount of storage required, which, which makes it a fantastic way to represent it if storage is a major concern of yours.